Welcome back to the program News Across Nigeria. And for more on our top stories and others, you can please visit our website, channelstv.com, and of course on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to emberchannelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. And having the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature, so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swap to reveal the eyewitness menu, and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. The University of Illinois chapter of the Association of Resident Doctors has commenced a three-day warning strike to protest against deductions in their salaries. Now, the premises of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital is empty, as up to 70% of doctors were part of the peaceful protest. Members gathered at the administrative block of the teaching hospital demanding for the chief medical director to address them on their plight. According to the chairman, of the UITA chapter, only a fraction of their salaries have been paid since 2014. Now, reacting to the protest, the institution's chief medical director, Professor Abdul Wahid Olatinwar, told the ARD members that the UITH workers are not the ones affected by this situation. 47 federal teaching hospitals out of 54 are paying full salary to their doctors. UITH is among the very few seven that are not paying. So I don't think there is any more injustice you want to hear more than that. And that is the reason why this peaceful protest has been informed and is going to lapse into a three-day warning strike. And thereafter, the Congress knows exactly what to do. Nobody is denying the fact that we are not paying you, we are paying you fully. That's not the issue. The problem is that I have 20 naira. I need to pay everybody, no matter how small. And I acknowledge the fact that I'm owing some amounts. We are not arguing that. That one is not an argument. I need to bring in more of you. But like I said, whatever government is owing you, whatever government is owing you based on this, is not enough of a reason to make people to die. Let's make advocacy so that our money will be released on time. It's beyond us. We support it with prayer. And those that know people, let them, let all move. Well, the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Gideon Bashir, says his country is ready to share the secrets of Israel's developmental strides with Nigeria. Mr. Bashir said this during the meeting in Abuja, the nation's capital, with the executive secretary of the Nigeria Christian Pilgrims Commission, Mr. Tor Uja, adding that Israel wants to deepen its relationship with Nigeria. On his part, Mr. Uja solicited Israel's support for Nigeria in capacity building in science and technology, and not forgetting agriculture. In Israel, we would like to see an increased partnership between the nations of Israel and Nigeria. We would like Israel to get more involved in the development mm -hmm. process as well as the manpower development activities of Nigeria. There are some things that God has endowed Israel with. I believe Israel can make them available to Nigeria and the relationship will be enhanced. Israel is doing well in its homegrown technology that has proved to be useful all over the world. It's important that Israel arranges that, especially during our youth pilgrimages, our youth are brought into an interface with Israeli youth so that we can have experience sharing and impart some things to Israeli youth and have impartation from Israeli youth to Nigerian youth. In Israel, we have gained lots of uh, experience in many fields, like agriculture, like education, like technology like cyber, like in the fields of uh, water, and uh, we would like to share this experience that we have with you here uh, in uh, Nigeria. It's not a secret that we want to hide, it's a blessing that we want to share. We want to share our blessing and we want to share the spirit of the Holy Land in Nigeria and in Africa uh, in general. 
With the award of the contract concluded, all seems set for the rehabilitation of the Lockheed Way Road in Ifoba Hill, Benin City, the other state capital. In an interview with Channels Television, the managing director of the contracting firm said the entire length of the road will be redone, including drainages that will channel the floodwaters to the Ikboba River. Lucky Way in a world marked Porters, Ikboba Hill, Benin City, is a linked road between the Upper Mission Extension and the Ramat Park. The road has been in a deployable state, ravaged by flood, resulting in a devastating erosion crisis, but some portions of the road completely washed away. Last year, the state government rehabilitated the upper mission axis of the road, while the Ramat Park side got little or no attention. This contractor said he has been awarded a contract to reconstruct the entire road within four months. This uh, contract is awarded to us by the Edo State Government for the reconstruction of uh, Lucky Way, including having to reconstruct the, the drainage and the essence of it is to uh, repair the roads and at the same time control the erosion from destroying people's houses around here. Our own mandate is to do a drainage that will take water from this low point to the, uh, to the drainage point on the Auchi Bene Road. In less than four months, we should be out of here. Work begins immediately as the firm demonstrates its eagerness to improve the lives of the people living in this area. To Cross River State now, and the governor, Ben Ayade, says he's unhappy with the attitude of investors operating in the free trade zone in the payment of their taxes. Governor Ayade was speaking during a meeting with the new managing director of the Nigeria Export Processing Zone Authority, Emmanuel Jime. Now, the NEPSA boss and his team are in Cross River to investigate why the free trade zone is not performing optimally. I have been told Tinapa is experiencing challenges of the kind that should never be allowed to challenge it. I go there with an open mic, sir, to rob minds and to engage with the stakeholders so we can understand clearly what the challenges are. I can see that there is a point of equilibrium between you and I, and I'm sure we can take advantage of that unanimity to really bring in new rev to Calabar Free Trade Zone. It's literally not working. And the presumption of innocence with which you did your presentation did not allow you the agony of the true situation on the ground. Like one of the companies, the, French, the Chinese company that you had mentioned here, that is into manufacturing of rods, they actually buy scrap metals out of Calabar. If you go around Calabar, they take all the scrap metals, turn them into rods, rebars. It's an export processing zone. But what you find, get there and find the rebars. And I did that gave an extemporaneous visit to the free trade zone, decided to go into their invoices and way bills. All things were being moved out to Onicha and all the environs, selling to local markets. There is no export going on there. So they exempt, they avoid tax. And when I heard you speak and mentioning the amount of jobs that have been created, I did a, a job sensitivity analysis on that company in particular. I didn't find one cross variant working there. I had more Chinese working there than even Nigerians. And no record of any tax whatsoever being paid, not even payee. So you have a vast investment of that nature in the states. Tank farms and other investors alike hide under that tax exclusivity status and do domestic business without paying tax to government. So for us, it has become a cause. Still to come on the program, more than 2 million children to receive medicines to treat and prevent neglected tropical diseases in Cross River State. We'll bring you details after this.